Where's Miss Rebecca? I don't know. I haven't seen her all morning. What are you? Who are you? <gasps> this is Squid. You know what, Jordan? Squid makes me really happy. What makes you really happy? Sunshine. I love sunshine. What makes you happy? Squidward. <laughs> <laughs> but what's something that makes you really sad? Rain. <laughs> I'm so sorry, it's been raining a lot. I know. <laughs> you know something that makes God really sad? What? Sin. That's true. And you know what makes me really sad? The fact that we can't find Miss Rebecca. So come along with us and let's go find her. Ready? Go! find Miss Rebecca. Oh, we looked everywhere. What is that? Do y'all know where Miss Rebecca is? I'm so glad that Jordan and Bree found me and I was doing my happy dance, the church clap. I hope you guys are doing everything that makes you happy while you're on this break. And don't forget, guys, what makes us the most happy is the peace that we get from God, the peace we get from staying focused and staying engaged in God's Word. So this week, we're going to dive right in. We finished the book of Jeremiah last week, and this week, we're going to go into the book of Lamentations. And you know, when we sing our books of the Bible song, we cry. You hear little tears in Lamentations because lament is like a poem. It's a passionate expression of sorrow. And Jeremiah is the one that wrote the book of of Lamentations. And when you open your Bible to Lamentations, you'll even see it looks a little bit different. You can see how it's broken up into parts, and those are the poems, five poems that Jeremiah wrote expressing the sorrow that he felt over Jerusalem's punishment. See, Jeremiah was the prophet, remember? And he told about the upcoming destruction that God would bring if the people did not repent from their sin and turn to him. Well, guys, Jeremiah warned. Jeremiah spoke the words that God gave him to speak. Jerusalem did not listen, and that destruction finally came. So let's go straight to God's word and hear the poems that Jeremiah wrote expressing his sorrow. Starting in Lamentations 2, chapter 2, verse 5. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord is like an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He swallowed up all of its palaces and destroyed its fortified cities. He has multiplied mourning and lamentation within daughter Judah. That almost makes God sound like the enemy, doesn't it? But God is not the enemy, guys. He punished Jerusalem because of their sin. They were captured by the Babylonians. They were taken away, but not because God hated them, because God hates sin. But we also know that our God is merciful. And one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible, guys, is also found in Lamentations. So turn over one chapter to Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, and let's hear the mercifulness and graciousness that is our Father. Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish. His mercies never end. They are new every morning. The Lord is my portion, therefore I will put my hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks him. The Lord will not reject his people forever. Even if he allows suffering, God will show compassion because of his faithful love. God does not enjoy seeing his people suffer. And guys, God did the same thing for us. 
He punished our sin, but he punished our sin through Jesus. Jesus paid the price of our sin. Just like Jeremiah talked about the coming Messiah, the coming Messiah for Israel, we see the Messiah has already come. And guys, we sin, we sin every day. And God hates our sin, but he forgives us. Will you seek forgiveness for your sin today? Will you turn from living for yourself and turn for living for him? Guys, God loves us. His mercies are new every single day. How can you use that? How can you use his mercy this week? His faithfulness, his forgiveness. It's not just for you and for me. It's for all nations. Guys, let's dig a little deeper and explore the Bible on location. What is up, everybody? Today, we're digging into a book in the Bible that has a lot to do with sadness. It's the book of Lamentations. And we're asking the question, what do you do when you're sad? Well, to help us answer that question, I wrote a little song called Tell It to the Lord. It goes a little something like this. When you're feeling sad inside your heart and you don't know what to do, remember there's a God who is listening to you. When times are tough and you don't know what else might be in store, just tell it to, tell it to, tell it to the Lord. Just tell it to, tell it to, tell it to the Lord. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Lamentations and get ready to discover that when we are sad, we can talk to God. I'm Joel, and this is Explore the Bible on Location. Babylonian soldiers were everywhere. The city walls around Jerusalem were being broken down. The houses and even the temple were all on fire. Away God's people went, exiles from Judah taken from their homes to Babylon. It was a very sad time in Judah's history. What do you do when you experience or feel that kind of sadness? Well, you lament. Lamenting means expressing sorrow or showing sadness. It means talking with God about the hard things you're going through and asking him for help. If you had to leave your home, like forever, that would be really tough and very sad. Today, I'm taking you guys to an amazing place called The Branch. The Branch helps refugees, people who were forced to leave their homes to move to America. You guys are gonna love this place. Come inside with me. All right, everybody, we are here with Melissa. Tell us how the branch got started. About 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago, there was a flood in the area and we started working in the area to help people build their houses. Well, after that was all done, we realized that there were a lot more needs in the area and people were having a really hard time uh, taking care of their families. So we began to pray and say, God, what do you want us to do next? And the very next thing he told us he wanted us to do, led us to do, was to open up a place where we could give people food. That's great. Now, I know that you guys work a lot with refugees. What exactly is a refugee? A refugee is someone who has to leave their country because it's unsafe there and move to another country. What are some of the things that you guys do here at the branch to minister to refugees and people in the area? One of the main things we do for refugees is we help provide them with food because they probably don't make enough money to buy all the food they need for their family. We also teach English classes because it's very important to learn English to be successful in, in our country. And we help them find jobs and connections to people that can help them walk through the, their new life together. You guys do a lot here to help refugees do 
any of them come to you or maybe even their kids feeling kind of sad when they first get to the branch? Yes, we, we have lots of people that when they first come, this is such a new um, place for them and they don't know anyone and their grandparents and a lot of their family still lives in the other country and they don't speak any of our language. It's very, very hard to, to leave everything. You don't even get to bring your toys and things from the other country. You just come here and you start all over and it's very hard for them. Wow. What, what do you guys do to help them with that sadness? We help them by doing what the Bible says to do. It says, love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. So we love them, we see them, we, we treat them with importance and value because that's what God feels about them. And we pray with them and we just let them see Jesus in the things that we do to take care of them. That's amazing all the incredible things you guys do here at the branch. You mentioned how you help people get food. Would you mind if me and the kids maybe made some food boxes? That is a great idea. We are in the food pantry at the branch. You and me, we're gonna make some food boxes for some families in need. You ready? Let's go. When we are sad, we can talk to God because he gives us hope for tomorrow. You may have heard of the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. The song is based on Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, which say, Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish, for his mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Even while Jerusalem was broken down and the Jews were being taken from their homes, there was still hope. There was still somewhere for people to turn. The Book of Lamentations teaches us to tell God about our tough times, to ask Him for help, and to praise Him for His faithfulness. Whew! Packing food boxes is hard work. Did you guys know that the branch feeds over 450 families a month? That's a lot of food boxes. But every food box is a reminder that God takes care of people who are in need and are going through a tough time. I want to fill up at least one more food box and then I want to show you guys another thing at the branch that's really special. In classrooms like this one, Melissa and the rest of the branch team teach refugees English classes and other skills classes. Also, this is where they teach refugees to pray to God through sadness. The branch is an amazing place, and they do so much for refugees. Remember, God took care of his people when they were in exile. He provided for all their needs, and he brought them home. If you're ever sad, Remember the words of this song. When you're feeling sad inside your heart and you don't know what to do, remember there's a God who is listening to you. When times are tough and you don't know what else might be in store, just tell it to, tell it to, tell it to the Lord. Just tell it to, tell it to, tell it to the Lord. And that's what we discover when we dig into the book of Lamentations. I'm Joel, and this is Explore the Bible on Location. When you're feeling sad inside your heart and you don't know what to do, remember there's a God who is listening to you. Now it's time for the review. Guess what we're making today? Emoji faces! <laughs> Emoji vault. Don't worry, we got you covered. So, Miss Short, what do we need to make this? 
some tape. And I think that's it. So what do we do to make this, you ask? Thank you for asking. We're going to get your tape. We're going to draw some eyes on it. You can do heart faces or normal faces. Normal faces, normal eyes. Or maybe even a winky face. And then you're going to get your string with some tape. Tape it to the center and bring the string right back around. Like that. And tie it down. So, we're going to play a little game now. So everyone turn your faces towards you. And don't show them until I say go. Okay, so we're going to practice making some faces. So can everyone make a happy face? So ready? Set, go. Smile. Okay, uh, now I want you to make a surprise face. Ready, set, whoa. One more. Okay, now we're gonna make a frown face. Ready, great, okay. Set, go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So when we're sad, we can talk to God, right? Yes, about all the things that make us sad. And the great thing is, is that he listens to us. Always. So I hope you all have fun. And we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> hey guys, remember, when we are sad, we can turn to God. Jeremiah was sad. He wrote these poems as a way of reaching out. God was sad because of Israel's punishment, because of their sin. Guys, remember, when we are sad, we can turn to God too. Just like our memory verse says this week, remember, God is faithful and he is merciful. Our memory verse is Lamentations 3, verse 22 and 23. Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish. His mercies never end. They are new every morning. The Lord is my portion, therefore I will put my hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks him. The Lord will not reject his people forever. Even if he allows suffering, God will show compassion because of his faithful love. God does not enjoy seeing his people suffer. Guys, I hope you take comfort in that, comfort in that verse, memorize it, write it on your heart so that you can stay engaged this week. Parents, I challenge you, dig into this verse, dig deeper, talk about God's mercies on your family, talk about things that have caused suffering, but that God saw you through because we know his promise. We know his ultimate promise, and that is salvation for those that turn from themselves and turn from him. I hope you have a great week. I'm here for you this week. Please call me. Reach out. I'd love to see your faces. We love you so much. We miss you. And let me pray over us real quick. Father God, Lord, we come before you today, not in your house as corporate worship, Father, but as the body of Christ, as the church. Separated or not, Lord, we are are here to worship you together in your presence, even though we are part. Father, wrap your hedge of protection around your people, Lord. Give us courage. Give us inspiration to find new ways to minister and to evangelize this week, even though we're in our homes. God, give us that desire. Lord, we love you so much. We thank you for your son. And it is in his name all God's children said, amen.